Welcome to A Creative Mind Fiction, an online audio version of flash fiction stories written by Carrie Zolka and Alice Nelson. More information about the authors as well as past episodes can be found at acreativemindfiction.com. This episode is brought to you by audible.com. Get your hands on a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com fiction. If you enjoy these stories, please consider going to iTunes and leaving us a review. Five-star reviews and comments allow other listeners to discover our show and see that it really is worth listening to. If you're just not really into iTunes, the other way that you can let us know you enjoy this is sharing it on Twitter or Facebook. Let your friends know about a Creative Mind Fiction podcast and let them know that there are free mini audiobooks out there for their listening pleasure. The story was a result of the writer's hangout micro story on LinkedIn. The title is called, it's called Cobwebs. And it was a last line contest. So you had 750 words and you had to end the story with, until then I knew nothing better. The two required elements were stars and power. Cobwebs by Carrie Zolka. Get out of here, Jack whispered. The bullet was still somewhere in his abdomen and Allison pressed down on the wound. Someone had tipped off the drug cartel and they'd been waiting for the FBI raid. Not a chance, man, she growled, looking around for something to plug the wound. Here, press down. She replaced her own hands with his, and he tried to do as she asked, wincing in pain. She started taking off her jacket. What are you doing? He asked as she began unbuttoning her blouse. Don't worry about it. Um, avert your eyes, perv. She snapped as she removed her shirt, revealing a white lacy bra. She pulled her jacket back on and zipped up the front. She leaned over and her hands seemed to make gestures in the corner. What are you doing? Jack asked. She leaned back and started pushing the material in her hand together. Cobwebs. Cobwebs will staunch the bleeding. And they're everywhere in here. I'll use my shirt as gauze until we can get out of here. She flinched as a bullet whizzed nearby. They were sheltered behind some cargo containers, but she knew it would only be a matter of time before one of them got hit again. You are not seriously going to put that shit on me. Are you fucking crazy? Shut up. I need to get you at least halfway stabilized before I drag your dumb ass out of here. Leave it to my partner to get shot, she barked as she lifted his hand away. The wound wasn't gushing blood, but it was flowing. She hoped shoving the sticky material in the wound would buy them enough time to hightail it out of there. The cobwebs in the corner were old and ample. She had been able to gather enough to form what looked like a dirty cotton ball. Jack inhaled sharply as she pushed it into the bullet hole. She quickly folded her shirt into a haphazard square. Using one hand, she pressed it against his side. The other snaked down and started unbuckling his belt. Now? Seriously? Oh my god, I am about to leave you here, she said exasperated. The belt slithered out of the belt loops and she wrapped it around his torso, securing the impromptu bandage over the wound. This is gonna hurt. Don't be a baby. He gasped as she yanked the belt tight and secured it. She secured her weapon and peeked around the containers. She could see the open door in the dark night sky with its twinkling stars not less than 20 yards away. She didn't see any of the cartel in sight. She could hear shots from the other side of the warehouse and decided it was worth the risk. She reached down and draped Jack's arm over her shoulder. Look, man, I've got to do everything in my power to get you out of here, but you're going to have to help me. We'll have to move fast. No dicking around. And whatever happens, you get through that door, capiche? Got it, boss. Jack spoke through gritted teeth. Allison had no time to ensure he was ready. She half carried him forward. In the gloom, it was hard to see, but the door beckoned like a desert oasis. They dragged slash jogged towards the door. Fifteen yards to go. A break in the shooting. The silence was sudden and jarring. Twelve yards to go. Shouting in voices, speaking rapid-fire Spanish, coming closer. Pick it up, Jack, she grunted as she tried to pull him faster. Nine yards to go. She didn't hear the shot as it tore through her shoulder. She only felt the pain. It knocked her forward and caused her to cry out. Adrenaline spiked in her veins and she lurched forward. They were too close to not make it. Five yards to go. Move! She screamed and Jack dug deep into his reserve strength. She cried out as another bullet hit her arm. Two yards to go and the door was filled with black fatigued men. Get down, one of them yelled. Allison needed no further instruction. She pulled Jack down and tried to shield her head as SWAT engaged. She prayed it would be over soon, that the gunfight would end with her side winning. But until then, she knew nothing better. The end. Thank you for listening to this week's story. You can find me on Twitter at Carrie Zulka, C-A-R-R-I-E-Z-Y-L-K-A. You can also find a Creative Mind Fiction podcast on Twitter. Our handle is at Fiction Podcasts. And of course, you can always find us on Facebook. If you're a writer and would like to participate in our short story contests, check out acreativemindfiction.com. There are links to all the writing stories on the website. Be sure to find us on iTunes on your iPhone or Stitcher Radio on your Android device. Just search for A Creative Mind Fiction Podcast and hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to get your free audiobook download by going to audibletrial.com fiction. And as always, be sure to share this episode on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, whatever social media platform you enjoy. Be sure to tell your friends about us.